going to hit that record button. Right, let's wait just a minute. <clears throat> hi, everyone. If you're there, if you want to drop a hi or hello on the chat, that would be great. Just do that myself right now. Just let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see my screen. You can share that on the chat. Let's wait a minute. All right, just um, on the chat, if you can hear me, could you please share with that? Hello. All right, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me now. So if you could either unmute yourselves or just on the chat, um, just say yes or hello. That would give me the green to go and we can keep going. Hmm. You can find the chat on the more button. I'm pretty sure that's where it is. Let's see. Oh, okay. Good morning, everybody. If you can drop a hi on the chat, just to let me know you're ready to go. I think the chat is either at the bottom or, there we go. Hi, everybody. Hello. How's everyone doing this morning? It's 8 a.m. here. Pretty happy to start the morning like this. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Gabriela? Fine, very well, thank you. How's everything there? Everything's great. Thank goodness we have really nice weather. It's coming. Wow. We're done with the cool well. heat. Good morning. Right. <laughs> well, we are very glad to have you here with us today, Lucia. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, and then is there. <laughs> I just yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are, Hi, there Lucia. Are, how are you? Good, and you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Fine. Oh my gosh, it's so great to talk to everybody and see everybody. Uh, many friends from Canelones, I can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Canelones, uh -huh. go, representing. They are your followers, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's great to know. That's so exciting. Yeah, sure. Everybody Good morning. for being here. Yeah, I see a lot of, um, yeah. a lot of familiar names, a lot of yeah. friends. So mm -hmm. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> sure, sure. And we're gonna, you know, uh, learn a lot, Lucia, because uh, we are about to start this blended uh, modality here in, in Uruguay. So, well, colleagues are eager to know more about it. Right. So, well, well think, yeah. So, I think that, not, yeah, this is the topic, a hot issue nowadays. So, yeah. well, it could be a complete success. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. You know, we got what? Um, probably around 35 minutes to cover a little bit and some tips and tricks sure. about blended learning. So I'm hoping yeah. we can get to the 
um, to the bulk of it and just take what Perfect. works for you. You know, that's Perfect. basically the bottom line here. Um, right. But hey, Lucia, is it possible to record uh, the presentation? Yeah. I'm already okay. doing that. Yeah, it's okay. right okay. now. So Thank I'll you. forward Thank it you. to you once we are um, once we're right. done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's recording, and just let me know when we're ready to go. It looks like everybody's in. So the, the I don't know. Um, maybe there could be some latecomers. Okay. Um, so um, yeah. All right. Well, wait a couple of minutes. minutes. I just love reading all the. Hello, uh, Lucia. Hi. How are you doing, my friend? <laughs> I'm great. I'm doing great. So happy to be here. Uh, same here. I'm very happy. Very <laughs> happy. Super happy. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's do some blended. It just reminds me of a movie, which is funny every time I say blended, but it's just, <laughs> just a funny movie with Adam Sandler. But let's just think of, let's think of education. Um, yeah, I know blended learning right now, at least here, it is quite a hot topic. And I think regardless of what continent you are, um, it is where education is moving toward. Um, it's yeah. quite a push here as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I know, you know, Uruguay is work to, working toward the way of having the infrastructure to support this kind of learning, and it can be very beneficial. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's proven it's proven a lot of great success where it has been implemented, and hopefully, this is something we can, you know, move forward with, and it works for everyone. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, yeah. So just let me let me know and. Um, what are we at? Uh, 10 minutes past, I think 37, just keep admitting. I just forgot you had to admit. So I was talking I like the first, yeah. Yeah, the first couple of minutes I was talking and no one was answering. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I tested my microphone, but I think we're, no. And now then I realized, oh, you have to admit everyone. Mm -hmm. um, whoops, That's it. I think I got ahead of the you can start, yeah. Yeah. All right, so here we go. We ready? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. <laughs> let's do it. So maximize blended learning. Um, again, my name is Lucia, many of you know me. Um, I, I'm a learning consultant. I was, um, I was an English teacher in Uruguay working um, in the ESL field, EFL field and, uh, and bilingual education as well. And uh, now I'm very happy here to um, work with you all and uh, let's see how we can blend education now in these times that are kind of urgent and they're moving to our new approaches and practices. So let's see, let's see what we can do. If you just wanna take a couple seconds to read through these three um, learning outcomes that we will be uh, working toward today. Um, so basically balancing that synchronous and asynchronous relationship in learning um, and, and teaching cultivating learning autonomy in students. So how do we support that? Because it is, it is really a great time to see if we can start building those skills of self-direction uh, with our students, especially with blended learning. And then let's see if I can support you there and how to plan on this and how to really, uh, what sort of techniques or strategies or templates um, could be useful to you to move forward with planning. That might, like the planning we do may change a little bit. So let's see how we can, um, align that to um, the needs in your in your school and I'm gonna get everybody keep writing on the chat here and I want you to look at this statement that we have on the screen and I want you to just finish it so if you look at this statement the right way to do remote learning or online learning is your way that aligns with so if you have to finish this statement I'm going to give everybody like 30 seconds to drop the end of this statement on the chat. The right way to do remote learning is your way that aligns with. So that aligns with what? If you can drop that on the chat to share with everybody. Good morning to you all. What students needs, yes, thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Students' ways of learning. Yep, all the students' needs. Absolutely. And that's where we start for sure. So we're going to look at what our students need, what our students' learning needs are, but mostly also the right way of doing it is your way because it aligns with your vision, your mission, and the resources that you have available to you, right? And those will come into that alignment with your students' need, and that's how you will move forward into crafting those lessons. Now, Blended learning, it is a hot topic right now. It is a way to move away from the conventional to what's essential. It's sort of doing, we, we did what we could, moving away from the could to what, let's do what's right now, what it is that our current situation is pushing it through, pushing us to do, and what would be right at this very moment. And technology has laid out the promise that it can establish that coexistence, the coexistence, that nice balance between in online or remote learning and physical learning in the classroom, or maybe one-on-one, um, -on -one, either still is in an online context. So how do we balance that? There can be a balance where we don't lose that human connection, that social emotional development that is so crucial for learning um, to our students. So let's see how we can move forward with that. So. Again, I'm going to uh, drop another question there. How do you think, because when we think about remote learning, it doesn't really look the same in every context. It's not really, um, it might be something that's not accessible to everybody. So how does that look to you when you think about blended online learning that it's equitable and that is realistic? Let's see if I can mute everybody. I'm sorry, I don't like doing that, but I have to. So we don't have any background noise or overlapping noises. I can mute everyone. So that's a good thing of hosting. <laughs> Would anyone like to share any thoughts? How does online learning look realistic to you or equitable? Oops. There we go. All right, keep admitting people. You can keep these thoughts in your mind and come back to them as we move throughout the meeting. Um, but no, and I keep engaging you here, um, that online learning lends itself, and especially blended learning, it lends itself to promote that ownership in the learning process of our students and to promote that independence. And that learning autonomy, independence, control over our own learning path and progress. And that puts us teachers as in, in a different position, it's more of uh, architects and engineers of learning, of that learning path, and how do we provide and build those tools in students for them to go out into the world and, um, and really use those skills to learn. So especially when we talk about literacy, we talk a lot about learning how to read, learning how to write, and especially at the beginning of the process. So then we can move forward into reading for learning, uh, writing with a purpose, and uh, um, that is key, when we, especially when we think about languages and literacy, because they cut across so many fields of instruction. And I came across this, um, this excerpt from an article in the Edutopia magazine, which truly resonated with me. And um, it says, I appreciate all the comments. That's just an excerpt from it. And he's talking about blended learning and how do we move forward um, with teaching more skills and less content, for example. But I appreciate all of the comments that have been made so far. Yet, um, I got the chat on top. Yet I feel there's one thing still missing. One characteristic of an effective teacher is that they don't teach. And that, that's where kind of I think that was what we, we raised the red flag. You say that is outrageous. How can an effective teacher teach without teaching? So, how does this resonate with you? If I gave you a scale from one to three and saying one, not at all, two, a bit, and three, it resonates quite strongly with, um, with how I see myself as a teacher. So let's rate yourselves from one to three. If you want to drop this on the chat. Two, thanks, Alicia. <laughs> all right, resonates quite a bit. I always love seeing twos coming in. I think 
that's where everybody needs to be because that's your that's kind of like taking one step out of the comfort zone right and especially for teachers thank you so much thank you and yes i do believe in me as a, a former teacher as well these are things that are a little challenging especially um when we use maybe to one methodology methodology of teaching but i know all of you great teachers you know your students you know what's best for your students and um just as this excerpt from this article said, we are in the era of teaching those 21st century skills and meaning moving away from content and moving toward teaching skills. And those crucial learning skills that really cut across um, all the fields are those learning skills that this digital citizenship and a very important skill, which is self-direction. Um, these all really fit with the blended model because, and especially with literacy, which would be like the, um, the overarching, um, I don't want to say subject matter, but area where we can really hone into what are learning skills and digital citizenship and self-direction. And let's dive a little deeper into what each of them would entail. And then we're going to move a little into how a lesson may look like so you can really foster these skills in your students. If I'm talking too fast, I tend to do so. I know we have probably 25 minutes to go, uh, but just I tend to talk fast. So please let me know. Raise your hand. Show it on the chat. Tell me slow down, Lucia. Um, I'm quite used to it. <laughs> so. Um, all right, so let's take a look at our learning skills. What's, what are some of the learning skills that we can really take a look at, that we can really start um, encouraging and fostering in our students? So in, these, in, these, um, in this model of blended learning, where we're trying to integrate technology in a meaningful way into our classrooms, when we think about literacy, we think about also looking at resources. We, we, we talk about language learning, but we need to, um, we access readings, we develop writing, um, we access knowledge through language. So one very crucial skill for, this, for, for, for these, these kids that really are um, built in digitally is knowing how to locate sources and locate fidelity and uh, sources that are relevant and that you can trust. So that's one of the things that us teachers can start integrating into our lessons, like knowing how to um, distinguish between what is a, a reliable source and what is not a reliable source of knowledge of uh, how to filter that content right and within filter that contents identify in relevance I identify a topic I want to explore so I identify is this really relevant to what to what I want to what I want to share um, so a couple skills here locating sources identify in relevance also, we can also have our students develop in that sense of um, developing independence and autonomy and ownership of learning, develop that interest awareness. So knowing where am I putting my effort on? How much time am I spending on this topic? Am I really interested? Where is my curiosity? And how to understand that so we can really craft a learning path. And finally, a very crucial skill for this, um, this new times is to know how to articulate your ideas. And what better, what better field to do so than language learning, right? So how do we communicate? How do we get our students out from the comfort zone of maybe writing a text, writing a Twitter post, writing a, an Instagram post or a Facebook post, to maybe writing a blog post or a paragraph or a, an opinion writing, right? So it is, um, and these all blend nicely with what it is online learning. As we talked about too, crucial this time, digital, building that digital citizenship. So we're talking about career prospect, for example, for our students. How do we encourage them through our literacy teachings to build that digital um, footprint that it is positive and that it encourages a good, um, a good image uh, once you're going out of maybe your, um, your teenage years. We can also um, 
We can also practice those citation practices. Students tend to borrow, especially when maybe crafting projects or doing writing pieces. They tend to borrow ideas from different sources which are not really cited. And this is a great time to, how do we cite online sources or how do we cite articles or um, cite, I'm sorry. Um, it's also another skill that we can integrate into our teaching. And of course, building that online identity that goes hand in hand with that digital footprint, it's all there and it all tracks you and everything can be tracked right now. So building that good positive footprint and that digital and online responsibility is something that through literacy, we can really, um, and, and language learning, we can really tackle as, um, as a path. And finally, building that self-direction. This is another skill that we can target. Um, we can target by helping our students identify the learning targets and setting a path and helping them set the way to attain those learning targets. Um, and finally, helping our students and, uh, and of course, them themselves practicing what is time management, which is so, so, so crucial these days. You can really get lost and down the rabbit hole when you go online. And, and the sources and the, and the sources and the amount of content that you're exposed to is absolutely overwhelming most of the times. So think about the, this rich field that we have to start building that learning autonomy and control and self-direction um, with our students through language learning. Like literacy teachers, language teachers, you really have a very fertile and open field to tackle these skills. As, uh, as you craft and help your students engineer, as you engineer that learning desk for your students. Now, there is um, one, of the, one of the models of work that um, I've really seen work, work <laughs> or that I included as best practices into our teaching is the workshop model. So this is one model that really fits beautifully with what it is blended learning. Because the way it works and the steps that we take toward learning literacy languages or whatever really subject area that you're teaching, um, it really lends itself to having maybe an online component or a remote learning component combined with in-person or one-on-one -on -one or synchronous learning. So, it is, it is, it is really um, a really nice fit that could work with your, um, do we have anyone? I'm sorry, I think we have someone waiting. We do, I'm gonna admit, hopefully, maybe the last one at this time, but who knows? Um, there we go. So um, this is one of the models that I think would work nicely, would blend nicely with your blended, um, with your blended instruction that is coming up. And I'm going to do just a little demonstration on how, um, how this model works. And uh, you take what works for you. Again, let's go back to that, to that thought of um, what aligns with my vision, my mission, and my resources, and of course, my students' needs. So basically, um, when we think about um, introducing, so when we think about teaching in general, we're talking about a little mini lesson starting with modeling the skill and this could be your 15 minutes online synchronous learning with your students or it could be also asynchronous you can think about you can think about it anyway you, it could be your in person in the classroom where you model the skill whether it is a um, in this case we're going to be talking about literacy or language skills and uh, but you can also think about it in terms of the other skills that we want to infuse with to our lessons, such as self-direction, citation practices, um, digital citizenship, um, um, identifying learning targets, building curiosity. These are, um, these are skills that they just need to be modeled and introduced and do a shared application of it. So for example, Let's take a look at here on the right hand side of the screen. It is everybody's right hand side. I'm just checking on that. Um, on the right hand side, we have uh, facts and opinions. So this is an anchor chart. You can build your own anchor chart. You can do it on the board. You can introduce this however you want. But let's say you want your students to identify the difference between a fact and an opinion. And this can apply to anything that you want to teach. I'm just here taking an example. Um, 
So I introduced the skill. Remember always, especially for ESL, EFL learners, visuals are crucial. So integrate, and you know that, you, you really know that, but integrating a nice visual for students to make that connection with the skill and content, um, it's really key. So, all right, so we're gonna learn the difference between facts and opinions, and as good readers, to get smarter as readers, let's think about intelligence as something that we build. Um, we need to be able to identify what's a fact and what's an opinion, and why do we need to do that? Because as a reader, and especially when I'm reading content and maybe content online, I want to identify that you know reliable resource or, um, or or identify the relevance, and I want to make sure I know who's trying to convince me of something with their own opinion, who's trying to persuade me from something that's a fact, something that it is really a research base or it can be proved true. So how do we readers identify that, right? So when authors share ideas, can you tell the facts and which are, can you tell which are facts? And can you tell which are opinions? A fact is this, this, and that. An opinion is this, this, and that. Now, if you're gonna look for it, just make sure you see, for example, what evidence do you find in the text? Look for, I think, in my opinion, this is, this is great, I believe. Great opportunity to teach language there. And then from there, we're gonna do within those 15, 20 minutes of modeling the skill, we're going to do a shared application of the skill. So we're going to find either an online text or a, a text from a textbook or whatever you have at hand that you want to do that shared application of the skill. And we're going to find, for example, I have here sea turtle discovery, and I'm going to go with everybody. We're going to read it and we're going to identify. All right, let's take a look at this paragraph. Right? What do I have here? Is this a fact or is it an opinion? Sea turtles are ancient creatures. They have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. A sea turtle spends most of his time underwater, blah, 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 blah. Keep going down. Oh, I see here, and I have a, a nice image, a nice diagram with different points. So what, what clues am I finding on this text that help me distinguish between a fact and an opinion? All right, sea turtles have long flippers. Sea turtles can bring their legs back to the shell. All right, so I think we have from this diagram, I don't see any, any examples of someone giving an opinion here. I don't think, and I think, or it's great, or I love it. One of the things I love the most, the best. So this is certainly an, um, a fact. So it's an informational article giving us facts about sea turtles. All right, so we introduced the skill, we model and applied it. And again, this can be, um, this can be also a time to identify relevant sources and knowing what is something that we can rely on. Um, and it, it can be done in person. You're maybe, if you're not gonna be in the classroom for the 45 or the hour or hour and a half that you're in, or if you're doing this part online, it can be really beautifully applied to it. You can navigate sources yourself. You can introduce uh, visuals through the internet. I mean, Google is an endless um, source of nice images and pictures. And then we got that we got that scale down. Now, what we want to do is we want our students to apply that skill. So where do we take it here? We take it to collaborative and independent work. And again, this blends nicely with that blended model. I taught my students how to identify a source, how to identify a fact from an opinion, and then I'm going to go and I'm going to say, all right, now using many of those share learning platforms that uh, into uh, interactive learning platforms that we have for example padlet is one i use a lot um, we can have our students find articles themselves and then identify what's a fact and an opinion i just had a little example here on a padlet um, found this article about pangolins in africa it's a fact pangolins are in danger so sea turtles are amazing. I found this article about sea turtles. That was the one we shared. Sharks are great. I found this article about sharks. It's a fact. I love sharks. Oh, me as a teacher. I'm looking at this student work. I'm looking at sharks are great. Okay. 
I found this article about sharks. It's a fact. I love sharks. We might have to look a little closely here. I think the student, just hypothetically think about it, I think the student confused a fact with an opinion. So what can I do? That's when I provide my targeted instruction. And I'm going to either work with a group of students who I may find similar needs, a small group of students, I can do one-on-one, -on -one. I could do, um, and, this, and this part can also be applied to online or in-person, depending on how, you, uh, how you're going to structure your, your lessons um, as we move forward. So one of the great ways, and again, model of scale, collaborative independent work um, to work with your students, uh, to have them apply that skill. And then from that work that our students do independently and collaboratively, we can identify where the gaps are. And that's when we provide our targeted instruction to make sure that all of our students are meeting those learning targets. One of the best ways, one of the best ways to do so is to host student conferences. And I know we have, I'm sure you have probably sometimes 300 students or more. I know this can sound overwhelming, but think about, is there any opportunity that you can meet with a few students um, where you can have a, a, a little conference to set goals with them? And hosting student conferences, for example, can look like this. Um, I'm looking into that, I, th I think for sure is the, is the shark article. The first step that we wanna do is we want to listen to what our student is saying. And again, this can be done online very easily. It can be a conversation online with a group of students where we um, identify the same skill that we want to keep uh, working on, or it can be done a one on one. And the online system can lend itself for it. So we listen, what are you reading about today? What, what were you reading about? Then we want to affirm because we want to make sure our student feels confident about what they're doing. So our student says, I'm reading about sea animals and um, a boy who loves the ocean. Oh, interesting. I wanna affirm that. Sea animals, sea animals are very interesting creatures. What have you learned from the article? Well, they're beautiful. Okay, it's time to teach something. I, I picked up in that article that this, this kid is confusing a fact, a fact from an opinion. So, they're beautiful, huh? Is that a fact or is that an opinion? What do you think? I mean, the teaching moment, I'm teaching that skill, that language skill, that literacy skill. Hmm, I'm not sure. So again, I forgot to say, but just think of this as a conversation. We're teaching here. So it can be tricky sometimes. Let's look closely together. Another skill we can get in there, look closely. Look closely, picking up, reading between the lines sometimes will help you identify what you need to know. So let's look closely together. I'm teaching again. I'm reteaching that skill in a small group setting, in a one-on-one -on -one setting with my student and making sure that he can apply it with me there. And then I take him into what is independent practice. Um, so again, this is one way that you can provide <clears throat> targeted instruction following these listen, affirm, teach, and practice uh, with your students. Now, let's review some of the best practices also there um, for, your blending, for your blending learning. Have a plan in place. I can help you with that as well. Um, consistent communication with your students uh, and with your colleagues. Blend available tools with, with traditional ones, the in-person, the online, what's new out there. Reduce the content load and focus on skills the most and differentiate instruction. I think, I think now is not really my opinion. It is coming into effect right now that um, the best way that we can help our students all meet their learning targets is by providing that differentiated instruction. However that looks like in your classroom with your amount of students that you have and with the resources that you have. But going from introducing the skill to a shared application to a, um, to a differentiated uh, setting. And now I crafted a little um, planning template for you all that I'm going to drop in the chat here. So if you want to, let me just grab it. So if you want to, 
keep it with you. So if you look on the chat, I shared a PDF with a template uh, that can help you with planning your blended lesson learnings, uh, blended lessons from now on. So uh, this planet template, let me just go real quickly to my PDF. Here we go. There we go. So your unit, the grade, the week, year, and um, what are your objectives, right? What language are you teaching? What content, what skills? What would be a guiding question to support your students in the learning process with those readings and writings and, and embedded grammar lessons that you may teach? How is each day going to look like, right? What is your mini lesson? Is it gonna be in person? Is it going to be online? Any notes that you have? Uh, independent and collaborative work, how is that going, how are you going to um, um, tackle that one? Is it going to be in person, online? What skills are you going to be working on? What readings maybe? And the same for each day. What assessments would you want to integrate? Formative, summative assessments. How are you tracking pro process? Any research and inquiry pro pro project that you can use to um, uh, help your students navigate those skills? and then any cross-curricular vocabulary that you may want to integrate as well. So please take this plan and template with you. Think about the ways that you can, um, you can maybe collaborate with your colleagues. Um, you can integrate a, a model where you introduce a skill, you do a shared application, and then you have your students practice, um, practice independently or collaboratively through many of the online platforms that we have. Um, for students to work together, just such as Padlet, or um, I mean, I, I know many of you are using Google Classroom, but also, you know, Prezi is another, another nice one. And students right now can really, um, can really do a nice job working visually, whoops. So as we close in today, um, first of all, I know I spoke pretty fast, there's a lot to put in there. We don't have time for the three, two, one reflection, but is there one question that you still have? Are there ideas that you wanna share with others or something you're excited to try? So if you would like to share that in the chat, I would really appreciate it. And again, I wanna thank everybody for your time and your commitment to your professional learning and the learning of your students during this really challenging times to navigate. So if you wanna share in the chat something, you don't have to share them all, but again, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Don't forget the, um, I will also share the template with Aldo and Gabriela so they can share them with you. Thank you. And the recording will go with you as well. I talk super fast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I'm hoping everybody has a has a great rest of your day. And I'm not sure if it's still warm down there right now, but hopefully it is and it's sunny and it's nice. Thanks. <laughs> and always remember what can be done on your side. Lucia? Yeah. yeah. May I ask you a question? Absolutely. And now there was a concept that I was like kind of um, go further into it because I was trying to think about the, the, the meaning of it. And that is one that you mentioned when, we, when you talked about develop self-direction, uh -huh. that you said online identity. And I think that's very interesting because Thanks. during these two months that we, well, almost three months that we have been working online in Zoom, it's like th that part, that aspect of a, different identity that uh, the concept of online identity online identity i mean i never call it that way but for sure that it is something new that we should like care about so um i was wondering about it a lot yes thank you so much i think it is really crucial times and again as teachers and teachers of literacy and language we can really help our students craft that online identity yeah. building that digital citizenship on you know, how do you build your positive footprint? Yeah. Who am I going I, to be? Because it chases you everywhere. Yeah, and that you have to address it. It is not something that just appears. You it have to talk happen. about it, discuss it with your students, maybe negotiate. So I think we should care about that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And you made a, a, such a great point. Any skill that we want to share with the students, 
they are, they're, I mean, they're kids at the bottom line, they're kids exploring the world. They're exposed to a lot of content and we adults, any, any effective practice needs to be intentional. So skills need to be intentionally taught. They don't just happen and especially not just happen for everybody. Uh, may, some of them may go faster. Some of them may need a little more support, but um, yeah. And I think, you know, this workshop model where you apply, um, you, you, you introduce a model, you apply, and then you address, okay, who's not there yet? How can I help you? Right? Exactly. It may, it may yeah. not be a hundred percent. It is hard for a hundred percent, but how much thing is that, that it was like, uh, it took us a surprise. So we just started working online online okay. and then it was like, oh, so we have to address this because it is a new identity, as you say. So absolutely you know and it it, it is it, it it took everyone by surprise you know yeah. here too everything shut down and teachers are like how do i do this online learning it's not no one has it unlocked but i think little by little everybody is gaining that confidence you know the best way to gain confidence and knowing that you can do it is to actually put it in practice and to see yourself doing it for us as teachers and for our students as well so we need to provide those moments of mastering that skill um, so yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Um, any, anything else that somebody would like to share? That's, thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you. All right. And I think I'm pretty sure these were 40 minutes, but again, we can dig into something else that somebody may need. Otherwise. Um, I'll close the session for everybody because I think, let me just double check the time, but we are there. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriela. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was very enriching, uh, Lucia. So we're going to take some of those ideas uh, to prepare a paper <laughs> for our colleagues. So, well, thank you again. And whenever we have all the material ready uh, to share, we'll do it, of course. Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, you are always welcome. And we are delighted to, to listen to you. So our regards to Benjamin, <laughs> our little dinos for... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank My you. Yeah. For his uh, all around right now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It was a pleasure, everybody. Thank you so much for having Bye. me. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much you. for your presentation. You. Bye, -bye. Thank Bye, -bye. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Yeah. Say hi to the top. Bye. bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.